Exploring a new map is always an exciting thing to do in every tactical shooter, and some players learn them faster than others. Before Pearl is released into competitive player champions, let's ask some professionals how they approach new maps. Uh, so when I uh, approach a new map, uh, there are like uh, quite a few things uh, that uh, needs to be considered. Uh, one of them is just the map layout, right? Does the map have open or closed areas? Like good examples would be Bind versus Breeze, right? Bind has so many like closed angles, the, the hookah, the showers and, and, and stuff like that. And Breeze has uh, a lot of open space. As an analyst, I like um, finding out which spots on the map I like the, um, let's say, areas of high interest when it comes to opening duels. Rotations, uh, sides, mid, uh, timings. I try to take every fight, I just try things. Even if I fail, I just try, 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 try and develop a knowledge over time. Then also comes into consideration how many choke points there are because that's also important uh, when you think about what kind of agents and, and compositions you want to play later down the line. Another thing that I really pay attention to is bomb sites. Like one of the most important things when I play a new map is actually understanding where is the default plant. Is it like safe to plant? You know, for example, a lot of teams are trending to playing Sage on Icebox, for example, because it is pretty rough to plant, especially on B-side. So my first steps when it comes to approaching a new map is always checking which smokes are actually pretty decent, what are the default plants as well, and how I can stop people from planting in the first place. Realistically, how hard is it to just execute A on its own? Can you just execute fast on B? Do you have to have a Viper for a wall, for example, to work there? Or do you need to try and actually push through that short position, try and take double doors, for example, to actually make an execute happen there? One of the easiest ways to approaching playing a new map when I, when I play it is playing with an agent that gives me some kind of information. So for example, Fade, Sova, Kayo, uh, Yoru to some degree because of the clone as well, is good to learn a new map because you can use a tool to dictate which space can you still have before your opponents are pushing into you. If a map has a lot of corners and it's like a lot of tight angles and stuff like that, flashers, like agents that have flashes, are become much more needed and useful as well, right? Another example could be, you know, how many areas in the map there are uh, that are elevated. Uh, because then certain agents, for example, Jet, Omen or Chamber, that can get up on those uh, areas by themselves, uh, become more efficient and more useful. When you're inventing lineups, you think about the whole picture of the round. Um, what do you want to accomplish? And then you go into a server by yourself. You just try lineups until you find them. You know, if you're doing like a Molotov, you, you want it to land perfectly when you, where it needs to be, so it covers as much ground, there's no gaps. It's very important to have like a good position to use the lineup from, because if it's in an open spot that has you know three different angles, you'll just simply die before you are able to throw it. I think if you're looking in to get these really 200 IQ lineups, unless you're Jonas, of course, you're gonna make mistakes, right? So keep it simple. Know the main areas of the map that you wanna check if there's somebody there. Know where the default plants are typically, and just make your lineups super easy and straightforward. Players need to do the lineups pretty fast sometimes. There could be slight error, and you don't want it to cost you. It's just too much. And with the molly there, yeah, it's gonna delay things just a tad. One of the most important aspects for any kind of player on a new map is to understand the timings. That when someone hugs the barrier at the beginning of the round, you can learn how fast can someone be in a specific spot on the map after a few seconds. Let's say uh, we play against an aggressive team. It's gonna be like a bit more easy to find timings because like they're pushing. But if you play against a really safe team that's holding angles and you know it, it's gonna be hard to find timing. For example, on Pearl, it's better to have a deep angle and push B to be able to flank fast because the rotation from spawn is slow and you have way more control uh, when you're deep because if they attack B late, you have way more early info and your teammates can rotate. And remember also that the agent that can break that pace, like Neon, she's faster. She can be in a, in a spot before you anticipate it. Hi! 
My first impressions about Pearl are great. Like the first impression that the map made, uh, uh, towards me at least, is how the middle of the map is designed. I think mid on Pearl especially is the interesting part, right? Like that's where we're going to be seeing Cypher Tripwise put, Killjoy Turks and alarm bots. We're going to be seeing teams on attack try and take mid early, break some of that utility and then decide on one of the sites to execute on. I think Fade is one of, gonna be one of the most played uh, agents on this map. On A side, it's gonna be insanely powerful to gather the first space, get the orb and then ult from in front of the site and then get just prowess on the site, right? But for that, you need a lineup for the eye which lands on a very specific spot so it's efficient at gathering all the intel. You can play the map in a really different way. For me, it's one of the best, best maps that they have released. 